In this video, we're gonna be learning how to integrate composite functions. So this one's slightly more difficult than the previous one. So let's get straight to it. Okay, so what exactly does a composite function look like? You have ax plus b and the whole thing is raised to a certain power and obviously we're integrating it with respect to x. So how exactly do we do that? Here's how we do it. So the first thing we do is we write the expression as it is. We increase the power by one, which is going to be n plus one as we did previously. And then we divide it by the new power, which is n plus 1. And then we multiply it, or you can say we multiply the power, or we divide the function ax plus b to the power n plus 1 by the differential of the expression that's inside the bracket. So what do we have inside the bracket? We have ax plus b. So I'm going to divide this expression by the differential of it, which is going to be a. So you can you can think of it this way that either the new power gets multiplied by it and or you can think of it as the, the new power along with the differential of the expression that's inside the bracket which is ax plus b in this case both get divided by the uh, the expression with the increased power okay so and again not to forget the plus c so in differentiation what exactly uh, what exactly was the procedure you would multiply the power decrease the power by one and then you would multiply that particular function by the differential of the bracket in this case we do the exact opposite so let's do a couple of examples it may sound complicated right now to uh, keep track but when we do a couple of examples so i have four examples lined up for you guys and uh, this will hopefully clear things out okay so we have dy by dx of 2x plus 3 the whole thing cubed and we need to integrate it so let's put an integral on both sides so this turns into y is equals to 2x plus 3 to the whole thing raised to the power of 4 because that's what 3 plus 1 is and then i divided by the new power which is 4 and also divided by the differential of 2x plus 3 which in this case is going to be 2 and not forget the plus c so this simplifies to y is equals to 2x plus 3 to the power 4 upon 8 plus c and there you have it this right here is your final answer okay then we come to example number 2 in this case we have x minus 5 the whole thing raised to the power 2 so this shouldn't be too difficult in fact this shouldn't be difficult at all so y is equals to oops sorry x minus 5 the whole thing raised to the power of 3 divide by 3 times 1 plus c so this turns into what this turns into x minus 5 the whole thing cubed upon 3 plus c there you go okay now we have square root of 3x plus 1 so don't be intimidated by this square root basically means the power half so first what i'm going to do is i'm going to write this nicely okay so i should probably make some room before i do the next example okay so 3x plus 1 so first things first i'm going to write this nicely and by writing it nicely i mean i'm going to write the power in index form so that's to the power half now i'm going to put an integral sign on both sides so that means y is equal to 3x plus 2 the whole thing raised to the power of half plus 1 which is 1.5 or in fraction it's 3 upon 2 you can always use your calculator to figure that out that means when i divide it i'll divide it by the new power which is 3 upon 2 and then i'll also divide this expression by the differential of 3x plus 2 which is 3 and never to forget the plus c okay so when i simplify this so remember 3 into 3 is going to be 9 so in fact let me make some room, more room. I should have thought about that. Okay, my bad. Anyway, so 3 into 3 is 9. So that means now we're looking at 3x plus 2, the whole thing to the power 3 upon 2, divided by 9 upon 2 plus c. So this expression is being divided by 9 upon 2. So if I write it separately, this basically means this is being divided by 9 upon 2. Now what happens when we change division to multiplication? Well, 9 upon 2 is going to become 2 upon 9. So that means my final answer is going to be 2 upon 9 bracket 3x plus 2. The whole thing raised to the power 3 upon 2 and never to forget the plus c. Okay, now let's do example number 4. Let me take this to a fresh page. So yeah, here we are. Good to go. Okay, so first things first, we'll have to write this nicely before we start integrating it. So dy by dx is going to be x minus 2 the whole thing to the power minus 1 upon 2 okay now now what happens we put an integral sign on both sides so y is equals to x minus 2 
to the power minus half plus one, which remember is going to be positive half. So I'll write positive half. And I'm also going to divide it by the differential of x minus two, which is going to be one. And then never to forget the plus c. So x minus two. Now you may find the answer written as x minus two inside the square root, which is perfectly all right, because minus half plus one is positive half. If you want to write the power in index form, you'll have to write it as half, or if you want to write it in insert form, it basically means square root. And remember, this is divided by one upon two plus c. So what happens when you divide anything by half? So x minus two inside the square root divide by half basically means that x minus two inside the square root times two. So this is what this turns into, two into square root of x minus two plus c. And there you have it. Uh, this is how you integrate composite function. Okay, now I'm gonna give you guys a quick summary of how to differentiate composite functions. So suppose you have integral of f of x and the whole thing is raised to the power of n. So there, we do this basically in, you can break this down into two steps, is that you first integrate the power, that means you increase the power by one, n plus one and then you also divide it by the new power. This is something that we do when you were differentiating power functions also. The second step is that you also multiply it by the differential of the function, which is f prime of x, or the differential of whatever is inside the bracket. So yeah, this you can say is sort of like a summary of how we differentiate composite functions. So I hope you guys understood this concept and that's all for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care, bye-bye.